Lewis Purpose recently has been accused of being run by and protecting people who have intimately abused animals. However, looking deeper, not only is this untrue, but there is conspiracy to take down the convention. Based in Rosemont, Illinois, Midwest Purpose is one of the largest furry conventions in the world, being run since the early 2000s. On October 7th, Mochisco, aka Koro, has made a now deleted tweet showcasing a problematic individual obtaining a hotel room at the convention, along with the same person showcasing off problematic stickers with the captain. Let the real stickering fun begin! He tweeted out to convention, saying, You need to do something or take some direct action against these. Sovereign Drink makes the first feed thread on October 6th when they see the similarities between the, the situation at MFF and Texas Furry Fiesta. At TFF, liberals were demanding a ban of a problematic individual and started sending abusive messages and he went to deliver immediately. I'm accused him of being far right and the convention chair who was a transgender woman for detecting these people. There are sits in place for these fans which already make public defamation lawsuits from occurring. He will continue to harass people until this ban happens. When the individual abuse got banned, the convention received threats from conservatives. They seen threats of violence at MFF where people People threatened to bring weapons and get the convention center or kicked out of the convention center. In the case of Texas Furry Fiesta, there's a verified individual instead of an anonymous account. They end by saying that no one is paid to run these conventions. That's a massive sacrifice of time, effort, and resources. Some people don't deserve the joy of this stating that they don't have to be liked or respected, but you shouldn't be abused. The next day, Cab's Corner makes a tweet thread about the situation. Side note, they are related to Cab's Corner art. Controversial Furry is going to be the guest of honor at Free for All 2023. They theorize that Covet isn't trying to get a few unknown problematic people banned, but instead trying to make an example of MFS to go. He Yes, you don't mess. The convention will die! Cohen's tweet isn't protecting people, but instead hurting the convention board members and the attendees. There was a post reacting to the problematic sectors, telling attendees to report them, but not to tweet or take pictures. Instead of instructing them to cover them in order to not give attention to these problematic people. I suggest peeling them off and throwing them into the trash, as they're getting rid of the sticker entirely instead of having to find a bigger sticker to cut off the original sticker. With the attention of four tweets and pictures, people are not actively trying to find and take down these problematic sisters like it's an Easter egg fun, which is the goal of these problematic people. They put out is nothing productive about publicly abusing an anonymous social media manager. The attendees demand the names of the potentially problematic attendees to be revealed by the convention as criminals. However, this can open the convention up to defamation lawsuits as an antagonistic individual can get a lawyer and cause considerable damage to a non-profit organization. Well, some attendees on MFF to state that the people who are intimately abused animals aren't welcome to the convention. They argue it won't change the mind of someone who secretly gets jaded in that behavior from attending. Along with this, if the convention publicly declared that they don't want these people at the event, this implies there's a problem with these people attending the first place, which would be bad for a convention's reputation. A better option is to sadly ban the attendees who are publicly doing actions to be seen as intimately abusing animals. The platform is hosting this contest should also crack down on this implicit promotion of this behavior, although that's outside the convention's control. On the same day, one Rod Sheet argues that Goas has initiated a smear campaign against MFF to take the con as being taken over by they point out they have a on Kiwi Farms, a website that harasses minorities and is in the cause of several suicides. They also harass a transgender furry, accusing them of being transgender as a trend and claiming that they intimately abuse animals. They're part of their larger Kiwi Farms group, the same people who falsify screen talk trying to claim the convention like the tweet supporting intimately abusing animals. They also have a person behind the spine chart, which mixes up the curvature of a spine to the center of gravity. They believe it can be straight, bent, and flat, while the center of gravity is a term that describes the point at which the object balances. While it does help furries make aware of what anthropomorph animals they can have intercourse with, it's more confusing than traditionally accepted Harkness test. This term is inspired by Jack Harkness, a Doctor Who character who flirts with non-human characters from across the series. It lists three criteria where the creature must have at least human intelligence, talk or otherwise communicate with language, and be sexual maturity for its species. If it fails even one of these criteria, the creature is either non-anthropomorphic animal, not sexually mature, or both, which can be either legally problematic and morally questionable. Look at the big picture, Corus is trying to generate outrage, which generates attention and using it to sell merchandise to the newly generated audience. On the same day, Korat got from multiple sources that MFS staff and volunteers don't condone intimate animal abuse, which extends to having intimate relationships with animals, and walked back down their claim that the convention is willfully and maliciously harboring these people. A day later, there's reports that Korat got a cease and desist letter from the convention. If you haven't figured it out now, now, there are some problems with the original tweet. First of all, it's almost certain that MFF and all large conventions like it don't want problematic attendees, whether they intimately abuse animals, underage people, or far right. These attendees are usually only banned when they do something that goes against the rules at the convention, but they're not banned before unless there's examples of their problematic behavior. With that, I want to discuss a problematic individual who had attempted to attend the convention in the past. Back in 2019, Midwest Purpose got into controversy over my own Yano Oblis attempting to attend the convention. Having been cancelled by major social media platforms, he announced his intention to attend, going so far to make a persona and trying to house a panel called The Politics of Fur. This is a man with significant bashes from attendees, as Milo is known for his extreme controversial and hateful political views. On September 15, the convention tweeted out that they were looking to the situation, which was met by criticism that they weren't acting 
speaking fast enough to ban them from attending. A day later though, the convention put out a statement that they would be rescinding his registration, future registration at the convention. In response, Milo threatened to attend anyway, staying in the email, I'm coming anyway, and bring bring friends, get ready. In another email, he said he had two hotel rooms booked under two different friends named Xavier. Unfettered access to the hotel facilities where the convention would take place. I know whether Milo fell through on this threat, but there are no points of problematic behavior at the convention for that year. While Milo and me have been with him in the best course of action that most attendees wanted, it's not possible to do that without doing due diligence. Taking a day to look over the evidence, even if it's obvious, make sure the convention doesn't have any liability if it turns out there was something they forgot to check. We must remember that another large convention is run as non profits meaning they don't have a lot of money to fight potential lawsuits. The convention organizers do everything they can to be legally sound in case some people try to sue them. As for people who intimately abuse animals, those who do so publicly should be banned from conventions as well as put in jail. However, it's much harder to ban someone who secretly does this or supports the idea without actually doing it. It's simply impossible to pick up people who engage in criminal activity if they do it in secret. We tend to those with far right views, it's a bit easier to tend to join groups of like minded people. While there are groups that are pro intimately abusing animals and underage people, it's a lot harder to find due to them being against the rules on most social media platforms. Extreme conservative ideas are a lot easier to be typed as free speech by these platforms rather than intimately abusing animals and underage people, which are just crimes, no matter how much they attempt to be justified. Now, is it possible for MFF to scan anyone who attends the convention? Yes! But it would be time consuming, very expensive, and a privacy violation. The best system that assures everyone's safety would be for those to report attendees who do legally problematic or morally questionable actions through the convention. Once enough people have reported a specific individual, then they can investigate and dig deeper and decide if the consequences of the attendee. Well, this system isn't perfect, it's being used to a certain extent at all conventions, whether furry or not. If you want to see another thing about Midwest Purpose, people are complaining about, check out the problem with the convention's room lottery.